in reaction to Barbenheimer's opening weekend, of which I was a part, as I told you, Jessica. Dr. Peter Hotez wrote on X on Sunday. Man, that's uncomfortable to read. Twitter, we mean Twitter, of course, but we now call it X. <laughs> well, so this is what Hotez said. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but anyone worried about a post-Barbie box office COVID bump? We'll probably never know since no one seems to be keeping track of such things anymore. Keep up with your boosters. Find a pink N95 or KN95 if you can. Journalist Matt Taibbi wrote in reply, did you enjoy going back to uh, the movies this weekend? Well, don't forget to still be afraid of COVID when you come home, says a certain doctor. Yeah, I have a feeling uh, Dr. Peter Hotez lives in a bubble, doesn't take public transit every day where you encounter and sit next to far more humans than when you go to see a film in the movie theater. Even if you see two a day, if you ride the subway to and from work, you encounter and sit next to more people. Or he himself does all the normal things and his his tweets, his exes, whatever, about uh, COVID militancy are purely performative to you know, keep propelling the fears and anxieties of the deeply antisocial people who follow him and still cling to this mm. COVID panic, zero COVID mindset. Look, you know, if you, and if you if you feel at risk and you want to wear a mask in public, that's your choice. It has nothing to do with me. I don't care. That's fine. But just but to, to worry people at this point. Again, we're it's year four of this pandemic. Yes. Um, after the widespread availability of vaccines, everybody, almost everybody, has had has some protection from a prior infection or mm -hmm. from vaccination or both or multiple of all of that. I mean, like, what are we what are we still doing? Bringing this up and trying to like scare people or worry them. It, I, I don't know what I don't know. I don't think it serves any public health purpose. I think it just serves the purpose of of uh, continuing to cater to this. And deeply antisocial, panic-stricken social media audience for the for the COVID zealots. Right. Yeah. I don't think uh, you know Dr. Peter here thought about the audience of the tweet. Right. And I don't think he felt that he had to. I think his perspective is probably just he doesn't go out in public. The only time he encounters the general populace and has to sit in such close proximity to them is in the movie. Theater. I mean, there are people. I'm not going to name names, but there are people known to me who posture online as as mm. masked up I'll never go out in public again yeah et cetera et cetera and I see them out about on the town just saying it's a it's a real phenomenon mm. you know the influencers in the wild accounts where they take paparazzi like yeah. photos of influencers doing silly things no really it's exactly you know, like that mask people yeah publicly some of, no some of these some of these mask shamers these like yeah. you know if you tweet a photo of yourself on a, on a plane or something right and they'll, they'll be like where's your mask mm -hmm. again I, many fewer people do this now yeah. than we're doing this two years ago thank god because it is over people we got to move on with our lives um, i think it's great news that barbenheimer had uh, like the strongest yeah box office weekend since like Endgame or something years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a that's a good sign. I you know I want there to be a healthy mm -hmm. film industry. Um, it, you know it's it's good. Nature is healing and so on and so forth. We don't need to disdain that or panic about it or worry about it. But um, you know and and Peter Hotez by the way has a long history. I think we've called attention to it on the show of being on all sides of the COVID issues. He was one of those people you know initially urging caution about the vaccine, the Trump vaccine. How do we know it's going to be safe? <laughs> that kind of thing. Then when when you know vaccination began became the Democratic Party's entire personality. You know, he switched to, no, you have, you just have to do it. You have to trust it, trust mm. the science, et cetera, um, yeah. and so on and so forth. In, in case anyone watching doesn't know who this individual is, he most recently got headlines again for refusing to do a debate with RFK Jr. Mm -hmm. that would be facilitated mm -hmm. by Joe Rogan, which touched off this whole news cycle of, no, you shouldn't, from the mainstream, be like, no, you should never, there'd be no reason ever to debate some crazy conspiracy theorist like RFK Jr. Mm, yes. I don't know. This, I still want to harp on Dr. Peter for his tone deafness of this tweet. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, the people that interact with this tweet, that appreciate this sentiment, they also probably are the type of person who spends most of their time when they're not working at home, 
They mm -hmm. don't take public transit. Mm -hmm. They don't sit in a pew at church on Sunday, which they would realize it's a bunch of people in a crowd sitting well, they close definitely to each other. No, they're definitely not going to church now. <laughs> for, you know, for a fact that these not are These church. are secular, worried people. Right, right, yes. And they have no God I, to I turn to. I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, no God to turn to. Just, just X now. Just X. Um, <laughs> for validation and support. But I think those people that this is the first time they go out in public, uh, they're not at a particularly high COVID risk because it sounds like they don't hang out around other people either. So this mm -hmm. new audience of folks coming out with the plebs is worried that we're all going to give you COVID when most people have to go out and be in crowds to do their jobs, their day-to-day -day life. The most of them had you all the, all the way along. They're in warehouses. Even at the height of the pandemic. Driving trucks, having to go in truck stops all of the time. People are working, you know, in retail stores where they encounter sure. all of the public, the customers, and their other employees. Most people have to interact with people as a part of their job. They don't have the luxury of living in a bubble. I, I, I just can't appreciate these takes about COVID that ignore what life is like for everyday people. We had this happen when we spoke about Keep putting kids in schools during COVID. Emily Oster, who was actually my advisor in graduate school, I know her quite well. She's not someone who wants people to put their children at risk because she's just like, some of you will die and that's a risk we're willing to take. She used data to assess the risk and said, I just want to make the data on where cases are publicly mm -hmm. available so parents can make better decisions. And she was painted by a lot of liberals as this terrible actor during COVID. Think about the average working class family. Do they have the technological resources to have their kids go to school at home? Do they have stable Wi-Fi? Do they have extra laptop computers for their children. I mean, it wasn't a reasonable thing to say, let's have all of the kids stay at home until this pandemic is resolved. We needed to get more creative with our public policy. And so a lot of this COVID you know, reaction, this holier than now, we have to take every precaution possible, doesn't consider the realities of the most vulnerable people in our country, the working class. And so I, I really still have such a distaste for takes like this. Mm. Well, Dr. Peter Hotez was recently interviewed uh, on News Nation by our colleague Leland Vittert, who asked him about the lab leak origins theory, which obviously has gained some credibility, but not in Peter Hotez's mind. Let's watch. It's important that you look closely at the sources of information. So the U.S. intelligence uh, report clearly overwhelmingly supports the natural origins of well, COVID-19, okay, okay. like SARS and MERS. The National Intelligence Council, national natural exposure, uh, the FBI and the Department of Energy, laboratory-associated incident was the most likely cause, CIA unable to determine um, the precise origin. A again, I, I appreciate the idea of science. No, but the summary, but then the summary document from U.S. intelligence clearly supports natural origins. You had two minority opinions um, that um, uh, really are, doctor, were not doctor, well supported. Doctor, what is everybody and, and so? No <laughs> two minority yeah. opinions. The, two, the FBI <laughs> and the Energy Department. The Energy Department is responsible for more lab safety than any other department in, in, in the U.S. Um, uh, actually, after seeing the Oppenheimer movie, I know more about how the, the atomic scientist overseers mm -hmm. uh, over, you know, were part of a bunch of different commissions, and then eventually the Energy Department is, is created in order to bring them into that fold. Uh, so it is their conclusion, the Energy Department and the FBI, that a lab leak is more likely than natural origin. And he just he just writes those off as minority opinions. What is, this isn't like a court ruled in and the FBI and the Energy Department were like two of the justices or something. And they're like, that's not at all what happened. Um, I'd like to imagine that Peter also sleeps in his white coat and does yeah. all of his activities in his white coat and yeah. his bow tie. I don't know why he had to wear that to do an interview. I think that a, a lot of doctors, you know, they should be allowed to speak out on their opinions on the matter, but uh, speaking out to dismiss the opinions of all others is not a, a particularly good use of your expertise mm -hmm. or your platform. And I think that if even if you are a doctor and you treat patients who have COVID, that's very different from being an epidemiologist or studying the effects of the virus or how it moves as a whole. It's not the same thing. You have an expertise to talk about your experience with COVID and your understanding of viruses, but I think there are a lot of COVID-specific researchers that were ignored by doctors who had, you know, the validity, you are a doctor, you, ha you are a medical doctor, but you might not exactly know what you're talking about when it comes to this particular thing. Yeah.
or maybe you're culpable. Maybe you're an advocate yeah. of research that got us into this mess. I mean, that's what we're finding out about all these proximal origins authors who you know, privately were expressing profound misgivings, deep concerns, couldn't sleep at night mm -hmm. out, of, out of their fear that grant proposals that they looked at, you know, funding that they were involved in, could have had something to do with the origins of COVID, but, but were, uh, were relieved in, the, in their view that we'll never know the truth, and so then put out that paper explicitly ruling out a, a lab origin. So um, I, I'm, I'm glad that, um, I, you know, that trust the science. We can we trust but verify, and uh, mm -hmm. the American people are, are doing that, and it is long overdue. We'll have more rising right after this.